Welcome to episode number four of the Getting Started with Rendering and Shading with Mantra and Houdini workshop. You're tuned into Arise Works, and this video will be talking about noises and ramps. There are many different types of noises in Houdini, and there is a way to control them with ramps to colorize the noises and basically stop building our materials without using textures or any other assets that we have to get from elsewhere. We can build our materials just using the noises that come with uh, the mantra. Basically, in this episode, we we'll finally get into building our first material. This will be a metal asset. And we'll start building the fundamental understanding of how to work with noises and ramps to control color, roughness, and in our case, micro details using the normal displacement. Finally, I think it's time that we go through uh, from overview videos and introductory videos to actually some practice. So in this little scene that I have created, you can see that we have this geometry that will be uh, shading and uh, figuring out how the noises and ramps work, uh, ramps work, sorry. And then this <clears throat> the grid that uh, serves as a ground plane object, and this is our super amazing following simulation 3K. So effectively what it does is just, uh, instead of manually uh, positioning the thing, I decided just to simulate so it's falling because, you know, I'm lazy. And uh, if you're feeling lazy, you should simulate as well. <laughs> Why bother? And finally, there is the camera, uh, which has the focal length of 100, the standard resolution, which I think actually we can decrease uh, because I don't want to render too much and waste too much time on uh, pixels that we actually don't need. And I think uh, we can increase the focal length so it kind of zooms in a little bit more. All right. And uh, I suppose final thing, uh, we could create a couple of lights. So our, uh, almost like a studio setup, a couple of lights, maybe two, maybe three. So I control click the area lights and it appears, but apparently it's a bit, uh, it's a bit far away to, um, from what I think. Now we decrease the exposure because this will be a bit too much and uh, now I want the oops I'm actually <clears throat> I was actually uh, forgot to disable the lock camera so I'm uh, controlling the same light right now so okay I'll just control C control V to create a new light and that's now that I control uh, look through light number two I can get it and be the uh, light on top okay now let's see from camera one and uh, as a final thing let's add environment lights i'll just again control left click here uh, very low intensity just a little bit of fill light okay so this uh, i think we are almost ready actually let's go to render view and hit the render button and let's see what we got okay uh, since we have tweaked the camera resolution it's a bit more squarish so we have we can have more space here <clears throat> okay so as i can see uh, i think we have to increase the over um, the top lights uh, area size and this light so you know the shadows become more soft and the overall feel of the lightning becomes soft so if i disable uh, these lights all together see what happens we only have the environment light that is with, with the intensity 0 0.02. So if I increase that, you can see <clears throat> that it is kind of flat looking one, but yeah, it, it works for a few light. It looks more or less okay. So not, now that we have this sort of uh, lighting scenario, almost like a studio booth, I suppose we can start adding shaders. Now I'm pressing... Uh, Pressing down the tab button, then uh, start writing down the principal shader. Uh, the first one will be our floor. All right, I drag and drop it here. Uh, okay, this is weird. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, the grid object. Let's go to the render, and let's say the floor. And uh, here we go. Yep. 
Did that did that actually change anything? I think um, yeah. I think there is a bit of a problem because we actually have the ground plane and the grid object. Okay, now it's working. My bad. Uh, let's get back to the dark gray. And yeah, th this looks actually all right. So this is the floor. And now um, let's create another one. I'll just, whoops. I'll just uh, hold down the Alt key or Option key if you're on the, on the Mac and drag and drop and it will create the copy and we'll call it the metal item. Oops, metal item. All right, so we are going to use noises uh, to do some operations upon our metal element here. So you might be thinking, well, noises, how, how does that even work? So noises, uh, if we press down the noise, uh, I press down the top key, start writing noise, as you can see, we have anti-aliased, we have the turbulent, unified, and yada, yada, yada. Let's say we want the whirly noise. So the thing is, uh, the noise, as we can see, has the uh, position inputs, the frequency inputs, and the offset inputs. Uh, metric isn't really uh, a viable input here because, you know, we can change it here. Anyway, so if we drag and drop noise here uh, onto our object, you can see that mm, this does not look great, right? Something isn't, uh, something isn't right. Why is this happening? Because we need to have the position. <clears throat> Sorry. So the noise computes different values and outputs them based on the position of the points or pixels in our case because we're doing everything render time so to get the position what we have to have is rest position um, i just uh, started to write rest p and we have the rest position and now if i connect the rest position to position as you can see something is happening but no one knows what exactly right because it doesn't look exactly <laughs> fascinating yet and spoiler alert it will probably not look fascinating at all but we'll get to there okay so if i increase the frequency now we can see that something is definitely happening and we can see a kind of wavy structure so wally noise actually is a wavy structure now what other noises do we have uh, we have <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, we have, again, I'll just start dry, uh, typing noise. We have anti-alias noise, uh, which is what you would, uh, I mean, uh, what, what you would expect. It's sort of like the cloud-ish noise. And as you can see, uh, there is a lot, of, a lot of dark black areas. And this looks a bit weird, right? And uh, you might be thinking, well, I'm not sure. Possibly there is something happening here. And I think that's anti-alias noise actually goes from uh, negative values to positive values and since we are outputting only values from 0 to 1 because all our inputs uh, like the base color are from 0 to 1 the roughness from 0 to 1 as you can see probably the only exception would be IOR so this noise can generate anywhere from negative to positive and to fix that we can use absolute what Absolute does is it automatically converts anything that was previously negative. It just flips it and makes it positive. Okay. Um, I'll drag and drop the principal shader again back. And uh, actually, let's make it metallic because, you know, it's called metallic. Why not make it metallic? And um, I'll just raise a bit the color. Um, as we can see, yeah, it's um, kind of polished metal and all looking good <clears throat> so if i drag and drop our anti-alias noise into the base color let's see what we got okay it takes uh it takes a couple of seconds to compute all right so we can definitely see that something is happening actually i will increase roughness to one just so it doesn't interfere with our overview of what's happening okay so as we can see it has those pitch black uh, 
pitch black elements here. So uh, I'll just uh, press here the snap just to see the difference. And uh, now I will drive the noise into the value here, make it absolute, so flip everything negative to positive, and then the absolute goes to base color. So of course I can just uh, click here and connect here, but I think the faster way will just to drag and drop it here. It will automatically connect everything. And yep, as we can see, everything that was negative became positive. And uh, we only have from zero going to positive to probably one, maybe 0 0.5 um, that the noise generates. Okay, so what exactly is open for us to tweak in the noises? Usually, uh, as in the case with anti-alias noise, we have the amplitude, which basically dictates uh, how much of a difference between zero to one uh, values we have. For example, if I decrease the amplitude, as you can see, it became, it, it retains the, um, the overall, uh, what do I say, texture of the noise, but uh, probably you will not see that well. It just becomes very, very dim. So amplitude is when noise, how much of um, multiplication of the values of the noise are applied. Roughness is usually um, how drastic, uh, how drastic the changes between different values are. As you can see, if I increase uh, the roughness right now, there will be much more noise in this. Okay, uh, there is a lot more noise, as you can see. So, octaves, on the other hand, is controlling, in the basic terms, if I were to explain it really basically, so roughness is how many turns a line in the noise can take, uh, a take on, let's say, per meter. And um, the octave is how much of a different angle a turn can make for the, I mean, okay, this, this actually might sound a bit confusing. Okay, I'll just showcase it. Uh, if I decrease the octaves, you will see that it becomes uh, a little bit softer. But the difference is controlled by the roughness. So if I in uh, in decrease the roughness, it becomes even more kind of soft. But as you can see, the, uh, the contrast between colors decreased as well. So effectively, roughness controls how much of a difference or contrast the noise can get based on its position. And the octaves control how many turns per pixel or per point can it take. So again, if I increase the octaves, eight usually is enough, but I decrease the roughness, it kind of looks the same, but as you can see, those lines take a lot of corners. A lot of, it goes left, right, up and down, just to get from A to B, right? So there you go. Uh, it's kind of like, takes a bit of time to practice. And um, other noises, let's say turbulence, right? Turbulent noise has pretty much the same controls. As you can see, it has the type, like alligator, pearly noise, simplex, which dif uh, have different texture and look to them. But pretty much everything else is the same. Amplitude is the same as in the anti-alias noise. Roughness is the same as the anti-alias noise. Octaves is kind of like turbulence in the turbulent noise. So let's see how that actually looks, right? So by the way, uh, we are currently in the alligator noise mode and it does what it says. It actually kind of looks like, like a frog skin, right? Let's see. Okay, I'll increase the roughness. I'll increase the turbulence. And as we can see, we have those little, I don't know even how to call it, Dimples, I would suppose. Okay, so you might be thinking, all right, this is fun and all, but how do we actually control the color of the noise? How do we, let's say, increase contrast, maybe add some 
color to it, right? Because right now it looks uh, okay, but not exactly great, right? Okay, so let's get back to our whirly noise because it's the most controllable and easier to spot noise out of out of all of them because we have those um, wavy structures. Okay, so let's start adding a rump. And I'll just uh, write in rump, and here it is. I left click, drop it here, and uh, it, gets, it gets automatically populated and nothing happens, right? Uh, so as you can see, we have some sort of line that goes from black to white, and that's it, right? So what exactly does it do? Well, using this ramp, we can actually control the pretty much uh, any color information or vector information in case the RGB color or whatever, and we can remap it. So basically anything that was zero will become, in our case right now, it will become zero. And here we have white. So, okay, let's try to make everything that was zero or black, uh, let's make it orange. And everything that was one in our color, right? In our noise or value of one, let's make it deep blue. Okay. Now, obviously, there isn't a lot of noise that has become one over its life. And as you can see, there is not a lot of blue happening. But it's okay. We can actually drag this to the left and increase the amounts of blue in our ramp. As you can see, we have more blue happening. And we can drag it, let's see, up to here. And on the other hand, we can take our orange and drag it closer to our blue pin. And what we are left with is a really drastic change from the orange color to the blue color. So if I drag it to the left, so we have a little bit more blue going on. As you can see, we are controlling the noise color. We are drastically increasing the contrast between colors and we are remapping everything that was black into orange and everything that was white or in this case everything that was from here to white I suppose it's somewhere from 0.4 to 1 we're making it actually blue and as you might have already imagined of course we can introduce a lot more colors to this for example, I'll just left click here and make this, I don't know, let's say this yellow-ish. Then I left click here and let's say red sounds great. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I know, just okay. Let's pretend it looks great. And um, <laughs> yeah, finally we got this kind of blue-ish, violet-ish. So as you can see, we indeed have recolored our uh, black and white into the colorized information. So I'll just uh, click, left click the snap to make it, uh, to remember uh, this particular picture and I'll just drag and drop it here. And let's see, I'll just uh, hold down the left click and drag over our thing just so it renders faster here. Okay, as we can see, something is definitely happening and we can also see that the texture and the veins, so to speak, of the noise, they are absolutely the same. It just so happens that we absolutely have recolored everything to our liking. So, we can use this uh, technique not just for not just for coloring, for color information. As you can see, we just added it to the base color and it disabled the tweaking of base color in our um, object parameters. As you can see, I cannot change it. 
because it's now being controlled by our noise. Or, if I change here, by our ramp. All right. So now that we have this thing, you're thinking, okay, I can see in our, let me just drag it, drag here. I can see that in our principal shader, we have roughness, anisotropy, metallicness, reflection, and all the other things. And yep, you guessed it right. We can actually not just control the color. We can control roughness. We can control even create microsurface details with the normals and pretty much uh, anything we want, right? So let's just check how that works. Now, I will, right now, I will click the Y key, which will make our cursor into scissors, and I'll just drag it like this and destroy the connection. And by the way, it actually is, th it's the thing that I usually use all the time, right? Because it's just so handy. <laughs> okay, so now, remember, we have our anti-alias noise that looks like this, okay? Uh, then we converted it to absolute to convert everything that was negative into positive. And now I will connect this to roughness. And I'll drag and drop our principal shader so we can see what is happening with our metal thing. Okay, something is definitely happening, but we're not exactly sure what, right? So I propose that we create another ramp. By the way, when you are creating another ramp, it will be absolutely weird. And you're like, I have not tweaked, tweaked anything, but it kind of looks as if we already did. Why? Because for some reason, I don't know why, just keep in mind, it's a little quirk uh, in Houdini. And what happens is, if the name of the ramp here is the same on the name of the ramp here, despite the very fact that ramp, ramp 2 on the most top uh, line, ramp 2, ramp 1 are different, but the name ramp here in the name graph and here are the same, for some reason, it will just inherit whatever the tweak, whatever we have tweaked here. All right. So how do we mitigate this? We rename this one to ramp one, and this one to ramp two. And as you can see, something started to definitely happen. All right. So whenever, whenever the roughness is zero, it will be like an um, like a perfect mirror and I don't think it's really viable in the metals so I will first convert everything that was zero into let's say 0.1 and everything that will be white I suppose we can convert it to points I don't know five okay so it looks a bit more realistic now admittedly now that I think about it I'm not exactly sure that this is the best angle to look at our thing so what i will do right now is create uh, control c control v our camera i look through camera number two and just rotate it so we have a different angle to look at and here i'll just press camera two press the render wait a couple of seconds and see what we got i press the render button and we should have a different angle on our metallic element and hopefully it will be easier to see uh, the difference. All right, we are getting somewhere, we're getting something. Uh, I actually think that on top, of, on top of that, it will be a good idea just to have one of the lights. Uh, give me a second. One of the lights look uh, from this angle. I'll look through the light number two whoops no actually number one okay here we go what is it i think i think like this 
yeah this should be this should be fine let's go back to our material give it a couple of seconds and yeah this this looks a bit better okay so we have our noise if we increase the roughness it should be more a drastic of a change so we can see like here as you can see the it's changing uh, like roughness really really drastically i'll just uh, zoom in with our camera number two and get back and yeah this looks okay as you can see we have the change from zero to one throughout our whole geometry and uh, this is actually really good for procedurally uh, texturing any element especially like metal or something uh, because you don't have to hand paint the uh, textures using like mari or substance painter or any other application you use to texture your item your assets in our case it will be super fine to uh, actually texture it using the procedural methods using the noises all right so uh i think if we go from points to whoops <laughs> that sometimes happens i'll just press ctrl z uh, be careful when you are rendering and tweaking some some different elements because it can go crazy really really crazy and you will not if you don't pay attention to that yeah you'll be ending up with various results sometimes really unexpected and not what you really wanted to in the first place okay so we have this uh, different roughness going on and actually i think you know what when um, we will create another ramp out of the same noise i'll just hold down the alt key drag and drop name it ramp number three because as we learned previously uh, if you don't uh, rename the ramp it will you know <laughs> it will not work properly so now i will drive this to our base color now i want that i i want the facts the color where roughness is slightly higher i want the color to be slightly darker okay and whenever we have roughness lower in our case 0.2 i want the color to be lighter okay uh, if that doesn't make any sense let's just uh, start from the very obvious uh, difference in color okay so this is very white and this will be super dark so as you can see anywhere that we have roughness and noise uh, getting slightly higher, uh, higher we actually inverted the colors and the higher values become uh, lower and lower become higher okay that make me, that makes any sense uh, if i increase the contrast i hope you will just see the difference much better so there you go this does not look very realistic or something i would i would really recommend doing actually uh, but it just uh, illustrates the point that i want to you know make it super clear all right so i don't think i have ever seen a more or less realistic uh, metallic that is super white so i actually make it fairly darker somewhere let's say 0.1 that sounds good and uh, the part when we want it darker this uh, looks a bit too much so i'll make it 0.05 where is it no 0.25 let's see here's 0.1 here is 0.05 now let's say 0.7 okay this looks much much better and to me personally it looks a bit more real okay uh, as a final thing i want to illustrate uh, a couple of things to you that will be useful later on now i will 
talk about the um, the bevel shader in the, in the later videos, but for now, I just want to stop and uh, stop here and illustrate you one thing. So we go to bump and normals, and I have enabled the round edge radius, and it does what it says, but uh, initially the effect it has is a bit too much. I'll just uh, shift and left drag here, so it it computes only here, and we can see uh, the difference better. So if I make it 0 0.2, you'll see what it what it will do. Okay, maybe a bit more, 0 0.4. Like All right. So as you can see, it adds a fake bevel to our geometry. And why is that important? Uh, it's because it has to uh, reflect the lights. Otherwise, it will not, it will not, um, sorry, it will not look really realistic. Okay, I'll, I think I'll get it back to 0.2 because 0.4 is a bit too much for this exact example. Let's see. For some reason it generating scene it's taking it's taking too long something is broken i think i don't know yeah it looks like a bug whoops okay let's see okay Restart, restarting the render uh, apparently fixed all the bugs i hope yeah um all right, so if I disable the gradual preview and just, and something looks a bit weird. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, dokey. So I disabled the, the preview. Now I'll just make a snap. And now I will disable the round edge radius just to see the difference, if any, it will give us All right, this gave us nothing because apparently maybe uh, it is slightly lower that we need to have for this exact geometry. Okay. I'm sorry, it's taking a bit too long because uh, the round edge radius here is usually very dependable on the overall scale of your geometry, right? So now, as you can see, it does something, but it's not really illustrative or illustrative of the result we are going for. So I'll try to get from the camera number one, and um, hopefully it will just illustrate my point better. So what it does is just creates a fake bevel on the geometry so it um, so it can reflect the lights better all right i'll just make a snap and turn off the round edge radius i i really hope it will illustrate from this angle a bit better yeah there is definitely a difference so as you can see uh, this sharp angle that is caused by a chamfer from the cylindrical boolean if i go back to the snap number four if you look really closely you can see that it's slightly more smooth than it was without the round edge radius now i'm doing all this and probably getting ahead of myself a bit but what i'm trying to do is to make the uh, finish our metal element and uh, make it look better by creating microsurface details and that will be done using the normal so effectively um okay i'll just re-enable the round edge make it zero zero point three and now i'll start uh, pressing the top start typing norm normal okay and uh, here we have this place along normal right it's um, that's a lot of words just to make a microscopic detail okay 
So I'm thinking that this setup of this ramp particularly uh, will work just fine. So without any ramp, let's just uh, make it, uh, let's just connect the absolute value to the amount. Now, uh, the amount is, you know, what it says, how much it will be micro, micro displaced. And the scale is in the Houdini, in the Houdini scale. So everything that is one is actually really, really big. So we have to make it like zero, 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 five. Let's start with five, okay? And we connect. And by the way, this is how you uh, do any normals based on noise on your principal shader, okay? This is the correct way. So you connect the displaced normals to base normals. And let's see what we got. Okay. Apparently, it was too much. So 0 0.005 is too much. Let's say 0 0.1 should be better. Okay, this still is too much. As you can see, it's really, it's, it, you have to have really low numbers especially on a geometry that it's not huge. Oh, okay, this is better. As you can see, we have uh, these sort of dense indentations in our geo. Okay, this is looking much better. All right, so what I actually want to do is have a ramp. Okay, it will be named ramp four. And again, we will rename the ramp to ramp four, otherwise it will not work. And what I really want to do is to have this place, uh, everything that was zero to be zero, everything that was kind of 0 0.3 to be 0 0.3, left click here, and everything that was white to be zero. So what essentially I have done is I have decreased the amount of indentations and irregularities just to, you know, we kind of like cutting down half of the noise that we have or even like 70, 60% of the noise that we have. And we work only with something that goes from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. And we use only that to drive our noise displacement. So as you can see, the result is, Indeed, we have some indentations, but not a lot of them. Okay, so um, as you can see, the interpolation of the ramp can be tweaked as well. So I'll just go and make it Bezier here, Bezier here, Bezier here, and Bezier here. Okay, this, um, this, not, this is not linear, this is a bit more soft didn't change a lot of, uh, did not change a lot of stuff, right? Okay, so um, I want this to be not uh, going outwards, as you can see, it kind of goes up based on what I see from our, um, from our lightning scenario right here, but I want it to go down, so I'll just actually uh, write down the minus, so it becomes the negative scale, and here I'll make it Point one, I think, will be good. Point two sounds a bit too much. Uh, let's see what we got. Yeah, this looks much better. Actually, um, let's see, something like something like this. I will delete this point. Let's see what we got to make it a bit softer, all right? Okay, so we have slight indentations here and there. We have a different roughness. We have different color. And all of it's controlled by just one noise with the input of rest position. So this is the, the basics of noise, how to work with noises in the principal shader in Mantra and uh, basically build 
some of your geometry. Um, play with it. I know it's a lot of information, like it's, uh, it might be overwhelming, like everything at once, but we will have more, uh, we will have more assets to play with. We will build more geometry. Uh, I mean, we will be, uh, build more materials. Uh, we will look at different stuff like frosted glass and emissive materials and stuff like that. Uh, we'll build plastic, other metals, and we will talk about additional utility nodes. Uh, we will talk about mixing down uh, two shaders, maybe even three shaders, or however uh, you like, <laughs> as many as you like shaders, uh, in one material. And we will look at that in further videos. So just familiarize yourself with the concept of creating your materials using different noises. Play with different noises, like uh, like as you have seen the whirly, the uh, anti-alias noise. Uh, the turbulent noise has a lot of different other noises. Don't forget if something is very black for a lot of time in noises, possibly it's because it has to be converted to absolute value. So with that said, uh, get ready for even more kind of, I think uh, this concept, if you get this concept, everything else will be kind of easy for you. If you're not particularly, let's say, comfortable just yet, it's fine. We will build uh, more scenarios of shading and texturing and you'll get there. I promise you, you'll be more or less comfortable after you've gone through all the videos. Without further ado, I'll just leave this as it is. I'll save it. I think it's saved as 0.4, Intro to Noises and Rams. Okay, play with noises, play with rams, uh, create different materials, metallics or non-metallics of your choice and um, see you in next videos and have fun thanks for watching and if you like the video hit the like button if you don't want to miss anything else that we have in the making hit subscribe button if you have any ideas suggestions or just simple questions leave the comment below and let's get this conversation going see you later and have a nice day